What is going on everyone, my name is Kodamore, and welcome back to the New Beginner Java Game Program Tutorial Series, Episode 22, where we are finally going to be doing Collision Detection. Now, let's go ahead and explain exactly how we are going to be doing Collision Detection, because it might be a bit different than how you've done it before. Basically, we have an image of our player here, and our player has an X and Y coordinate in the world, and that begins at the upper left-hand player of the image, of course. And what we're going to do, or what you would do in the most simplest form, is you would create something called a bounding box, or a collision box, a collision rectangle, starting from the x and y coordinate up here of the player, with a width and height that is the width and height of the player, so the entire player image, which would be this red box right here. And you would use the corners of this red box, or this bounding box, and check it to see if, when the player is moving, if he's moving into a tile. And if he is, you don't move the player. Now, of course, we don't want this, because if this is what we're checking collision on, and this is the player, we're going to be checking the player's head for collision, we're going to be checking the sides of the player with empty space for collision, and it's going to look absolutely terrible. We want a bounding box, or a collision area, on the player, that's a bit smaller, that only covers his body like this. We want just this area of the player to have collision detection on it. So we have to have some way in our code to represent this area of the player, or what area we want to check for collision on the player. And it's as simple as creating a rectangle object. A rectangle basically stores four variables, x, y, width, and height. What we are going to do is we are going to have those variables relative to the player. So the x is going to be how far over from the edge of the player's image should the bounding box be. y of the rectangle should be how far down should the bounding box be from the image of the player. And then the width and height would be the width and the, bounding, width and the height of the bounding box from those x and y coordinate offsets that you specified. If that sounds confusing, I'm going to try and explain it a bit more, and when we actually code it, it'll make a lot more sense. Basically, x would be like this blue line. How many pixels over from the edge of the player image should the bounding box start? y would be how many pixels down from the edge of the player should the bounding box start? And then the width and height would be the width and height from this point, determined by x and y, should the bounding box be? What size should it be? Which would cover the body of the player. And this will allow us to create bounding boxes of any size that we'd like. That way we can have different enemies with, with different bounding boxes and different collision areas if they're different sizes. Once we actually get to coding this, you'll begin to see this more and more as well. Now let's take a look at an example world here. Here we have our player. And our player has the x and y coordinate at the upper left of his image, right? Well, we don't actually have to worry about that anymore if we have the collision box of the player. After we have the collision box, all we have to worry about is that collision box and checking collisions against this square and other solid tiles. So I'm going to pop on a grid right here, and that just shows the coordinate of the tiles. So this is tile 3, 1, 3, 2, 2, 3. And what we're going to do is we are basically going to take our player, and we are going to move it one axis at a time. So we're going to move it horizontally on the x-axis first, then check for collisions on the y-axis after. So we're going to say, all right, the player is moving right, and he's moving right, say, to this position. So we're going to take this position temporarily, and we're going to take the collision box coordinates, and we're going to check every corner of the upper right and upper, or I'm sorry, and lower right corners of the collision box. Because if we're moving right, these are the only two corners of this rectangle that will collide with a tile. So what we're going to check is we're going to check, is this corner of the player inside of a solid tile? So we're going to say, all right, what tile is this corner in? We're going to convert it from pixels to tile coordinates, which would give us tile 3, 2. And 3, 2, that tile is a solid tile. And we're going to do the same thing for the lower right corner. Is this a solid tile? Well, it's the same tile, so yes, it is solid. So we're going to say, all right, that is no good. You can't move into a solid tile. So we're going to move the player right on back to where he was and not even move him. Now, we're actually going to change how we do this so it's more perfect later on. But for right now, that's the basics of it. If he's moving into a solid tile, we're not even going to move him. And it works the same for going up and down. If the player is moving down into this tile, we're just going to check the lower two corners, the lower left and lower right hand corners, see if they collide with the solid tile. If they do, don't move the player and we just leave him in his spot. Now this isn't a perfect way of doing collision detection, but it's a start and we're going to improve upon it in many episodes to come. So let's get on to actually doing collision detection now. First things first, head on into your world class and go to the getTile method. Now we are going to be using this getTile method quite a bit. However, 
It takes in an x and y tile coordinate, and it indexes an array using those inputs, or those parameters. But this is a problem if we have parameters that are outside of the map. Say the player somehow found a glitch where he can get outside of the map, well, once he does, it'll just crash the game. And we really don't want that, so what we're going to do is we are going to make sure this x and y parameter that is passed in is greater than zero, so it's not a negative number, and make sure that it's less than the width or height of the map. And if it is outside the map, we're just gonna say he's standing on a grass tile, that way we don't get any errors. Basically, we're just gonna do if x is less than zero, or y is less than zero, or x is greater than or equal to the width of the map, or y is greater than or equal to the height of the map. If any of those are true, then we are just going to return tile.grass tile. By default, that way the game thinks that he is standing on a grass tile even though he's outside of the map somewhere. This is just to prevent any errors, make sure x and y are in the boundary of the map. Alright, now let's head on into the entity class and we are going to make a protected rectangle object which I am going to be calling bounds, which stands for collision bounds. Go ahead and import it and down here in the entity constructor what we're going to do by default is we're just going to say bounds equals a new uh, rectangle like so and we're going to say the x and y coordinates are going to be 0 comma 0. This means it's just going to be at the upper left hand hand corner of the entity's image, or the actual x and y position of the entity. There are no offsets to the bounding box by default. And then the width and height are just going to be the width and height of the actual entity. So by default, an entity is going to have a bounding box that is the exact same size of the entity's image, starting from the x and y coordinate of it, ranging for width and height of the entity. Next, we're going to head on into the player class here, and after we call the super method, we are actually going to set our own boundary or bounding rectangle. We're going to say bounds.x, and I'm just going to set it to say 16, we'll do bounds.y, I'll set that to, I don't know, 32, bounds.width, I'll set that equal to 32, and I'll also set a height equal to 32 as well. So this is saying the collision box of our player should be 16 pixels to the left of the x coordinate of the player, 32 pixels down from the x coordinate of the player, and then from there it should be a width and height of 32 by 32 or a square. Now we can't really visualize anything yet. This hasn't done anything to our game. So temporarily we're gonna go down to the render method of the player and after we actually render the player we're just gonna say g.setColor will set the color of the graphics to um, color.red, I'll set it to the color red, and then we're going to do g.fillRect, and we're just going to fill some rectangle, and we're actually going to show on the screen where the collision boundary rectangle is on the player. Now because the fillRect method only takes in integers, we're going to have to cast everything to an int, so we're going to cast this to an integer, and we're going to cast the x position. Now what we have to do is we have to cast, and you would think it'd be as simple as doing bounds.x minus handler dot get game camera whoop, get game camera dot get x offset and we have to subtract the game camera's x offset so we get the proper position on the screen now you would think this would work but remember the x coordinate of our boundary rectangle is the offset or how many pixels over from our current x position that means we must add it to our current x position to get the right position on the screen if you go through it in your head you should be able to figure it out I'm then going to copy all of this right here and we're going to add in a second parameter to this fillRect method and we are just going to replace everything with y. So y plus bounds.y minus handler.getY offset. And then of course we're going to need to specify the width and the height of our bounding rectangle and that's just going to be bounds, whoops, bounds.width and bounds.height. Go ahead and save that and go ahead and run your game. And as you can see, I have a square on the body of my player. So what we did is we took the x coordinate of the player, so the upper left hand corner of the player's image, and then to get the proper position, we subtracted the game camera's x offset. So now we're at this point in the screen. And then we just had to add the bounds.x or the offset, how far over the bounding rectangle should be from the edge of the player image. We did the same thing for height, and then the rectangle was rendered at the bounds width and height as usual. Again, some basic math just so we can actually visualize the collision box of our player on the screen. And you'll notice if we go on up to our player's constructor up here and we comment all of this out and we run our game, you will see that by default the bounding rectangle is the full size of our image and this is a pretty big player. So that's why we used all these coordinates of our bounds to actually get a collision box that only fit the body of our player. Okay, 
We have the collision box done. That's all we need in the player class. Let's head on over to the player, or I'm sorry, the creature class, and let's get collision detection working. First, we're going to start by making two more methods, and I'm just going to make them public void move x, and I'm going to make one public void move y. And these are just going to move on the x-axis only and then the y-axis only. So in the move method here, where we move on the x-axis, x plus equals x move, we're just going to move that line of code in the move x method, and we're going to move this line of code into the move y method. And then in the move method, we're just going to move x, we're going to call those two new methods, and move y, like so. So this didn't change anything, we just moved the two pieces of code into two new functions so that we can move separately along the x and y axes. Now it's time to get to actual collision detection stuff. Now to make our lives easier, we are going to create a method down here and it'll be a protected method that will return a boolean and I'm going to call it collision with tile, like so, and it's going to take in an int x and an int y position. And all this is going to do is it's going to take some tile x and some tile y coordinate, and if it's solid, return true, if not, return false. So we just have to do return handler dot get world dot get tile at x and y dot is solid. So we're calling the is solid of whatever tile we are specifying by x and y. And we're going to use that method in a little bit. Now, in the move x, we are going to completely remove x plus equals x move. And we are going to create an if statement. And we're going to say if x move is greater than zero. And then we're going to do else if x move is less than zero. And basically, if x move or the amount we should move by is greater than zero or a positive number, that means we are definitely moving right. If x move is a negative number, that means we're going lower on the x-axis, that means we are moving left. And this is going to help us determine what corners we need to check for a collision detection. It's going to seem a tiny bit pointless right now, but in the next tutorial it'll help us out a lot. When we move left, all we're going to do is x plus equals x move, and we are just going to worry about getting collision detection working when we are moving right. That's what we're going to start with. So we are going to create a temporary x variable, int tx, and that is we have to cast everything to an integer, and that's going to be our x position plus our x move, so where we are moving to, where we are are trying to move to, then we have to get to the very edge of our bounding box. This means we have to add the bounds.x coordinate, so the offset of the image, and because we are moving right, we need to check the two upper and lower right corners of our bounding box. That means we must also add bounds.width to it. Now this will get us the position in pixels, but we want the position in tile coordinates, so we have to divide by tile.tile .tile width. And this will get you the x coordinate of the tile we are trying to move into. And here comes the collision stuff. We're going to create another if statement here, and we're going to say if there is not a collision with tile, that the method that we just made, if there isn't a collision with a tile of tx, our temporary x variable, the tile we're trying to move into, and now we need a y coordinate of the tile that we're trying to move into. This can be one of two things, the upper right corner of our bounding box or the lower right corner of our bounding box. We're just going to start by checking the upper right corner of the bounding box. So we have to cast everything into an integer first, and it's just going to be y plus bounds dot y. This will get us the upper portion, in turn the upper right, of our bounding box. And of course, we must divide this by tile that tile height to get it in terms of tiles. So what this is saying, and let me clean this up a bit, what this is saying is it's saying Whatever tile we're trying to move into, tx and this equation, which will get us the y position of the upper right of our bounding box, if it is not solid, the exclamation point means isn't, if it's false, there is no solid tile, then we're good to move. We can just do x plus equals x move. Else, if collision with tile returns true, this if statement won't run, and we aren't going to move anywhere. Now, if we run our game, you'll see if we move around, we can move freely, there's no collision detection. However, the upper right portion of our bounding box is being checked when we are moving right. So if we move right into this tile, it's going to stop us. However, once this corner of our bounding box goes above a tile, we're able to move right through it. So we have to check the lower right corner of our bounding box as well, that way we're not able to pass through whatsoever. This is as simple as saying, at the end of this if statement here, we're going to say AND, a double AND symbol. So if that isn't solid AND, there isn't a collision with a tile, our tile tx, and we have to cast everything to an int again, y plus bounds.y, and then we're getting the lower right corner, so to get the lower portion of our bounding rectangle, we must also add bounds.height divided by 
tile dot tile height. This will check the lower right corner as well. And if we run our game here, you'll see that we are no longer able to move right into a tile. There is full collision detection based on our collision box. Of course, any other direction, there isn't any collision detection. So it's not that useful right now. And notice something right here. If I try to move right in this tile, there is still a gap between my collision box and the player, or in the tile. This is because where we are moving into the tile, it is solid, so it's not moving us at all, leaving us with a little gap in between the tile. Now we're going to fix that in the next tutorial, it's just something I wanted to point out, and that is one big flaw with this collision detection system that we are doing in today's tutorial and that's that it leaves little gaps in between some tiles. Okay, we got collision detection moving right, let's try and get the other three directions done as well. All right, so if we are moving to the left or X move is less than zero, I'm just gonna copy the code from our right collision detection. And if we're moving left, we have to check the left side of the collision rectangle or of our collision bounds. That means we don't have to add bounds.width to our temporary X. We just tapped out bounds.x to get the left side of our bounding rectangle. It's really as simple as that to get left collision detection. If we go ahead and run our game, you'll see that we are no longer able to move left into a tile, and it will work for both the upper and lower corners going left into a tile. And that's, we're keeping the same y equations because we're still getting the upper and lower portions of the bounding box, but our x has changed to the left portion or the left side of our bounds. Now moving up and down will require a bit more work to do because we have to change up variables. So in move y, we are gonna say if y move is uh, less than zero, and then we're gonna say else if y move is greater than zero. Uh, if y move is greater than zero, it's a positive number, that means we are actually going down. If it's a less than zero or a negative number, that means we're actually moving up. So if we are moving up, we have to get a an integer, temporary y, and we're gonna set that equal to, and we have to cast all of this into an integer. It is going to be y plus y move to get where we are moving into, plus bounds dot y. And this will get us the top edge or the top portion of our bounding rectangle, and we have to divide that by tile, the tile height, to get it in terms of tiles. And then very similarly to above, we're gonna say if there is not a collision with a tile, and because we don't have a temporary x, now we have to say, and we have to cast this into an integer, our x position plus bounds.x, this will get the left portion of the bounding rectangle, so the upper left hand corner, and of course we have to divide this all by tile that tile width. And then the second parameter will be our temporary y variable. If there isn't a collision there, then we will just do y plus equals y move. This should get us collision detection with the upper left hand corner of our player moving up. So if we go up here, we will get collision detection with our player and we aren't able to move down because we don't do anything in the down if statement right now. Now let's get collision detection with the upper right hand corner of the player. So we are going to do and and. So if there isn't a collision with that and, and I'm just going to copy this line right here and paste it down here, this, all we have to do is add bounds.x and add bounds.width as well to get to the right side of the bounding rectangle, in turn getting the upper right corner. This will then do both corners for us. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and copy all this code and paste it under the down section as well. If we are moving down, we just have to add bounds.height to get the lower portion of the bounding rectangle. And this should hopefully be full collision detection in every single direction, as you can see. Now we still have this gap problem. We are, we are going to fix that in the next tutorial so it looks more pretty, but there is working collision detection. We got working collision detection done with tiles. It's actually pretty cool. It makes our game much more game-like because we can't just pass through everything. All right, great, we have collision detection. This was a really long episode, I apologize everyone, but I really wanted to make sure I just explained the concepts. I hope you guys understood anything. If you have any questions whatsoever, go ahead, ask them down in the comments, either I or someone will reply to you. If you need the source code or need to check something, it's all on my website, which you can find at the link below down in the description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.